How's What's happening? How's it, buddy? Listen to that clarity. Yes. Come on, Daga. Let's pull this. Let's do it professionally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Cool, man. Well, good morning there, AJ Fenta. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> so good to have you on the <laughs> Ridiculously Human podcast. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be on your podcast. And I also want to just like tell people that when I started my podcast, the first people I phoned was you two cats. My, 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 <laughs> my good friend Art Matthews said to me, because I wanted Art on my first podcast, and, and Art said to me, no, 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 listen, I'm, I'm just doing a podcast with these two South Africans living in, in the UK. And so I thought, shit, I said, can you please put me in contact with him? Because I don't know where to go, what to do. I don't know, I don't know what <laughs> a podcast. And I spoke to you guys first, so thank you for... The, bloody, the information, it was amazing. Oh, it was epic, man. We were so stoked to be able to chat to you, man. Seriously. Yeah, but for sure. It, it was one of those like moments, you know, um, I, I, like I was checking our Insta and this was, so I was doing a little bit of research yesterday to kind of remember when we, when we sort of first started speaking to you. And, and I went back to, through the messages Craig and I sent to each other and it was the 13th of August last year. And um, I sent him a screenshot of our Instagram and I'd circled uh, your name and was like AJ Fenta started following you. I was like, no ways, check this out. <laughs> so, so yeah, and then um, like you said, it wasn't like too long after that that we started chatting and stuff, which was flipping awesome. So, but um, you know, to be honest with you, we're we're still a little bit starstruck, um, or at least I am, you know. And uh, you, you, you're a rock star, like you know, been flipping watching you for forever on TV, and and definitely enjoyed some some great moments watching you. So, so thanks so much, and then like you said, welcome. Uh, welcome to the show, bud. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, man. So, so I guess it would be kind of like maybe a little bit silly of us not to, not to ask and, and just begin with like, how are you actually coping, you know, with, uh, with lockdown in South Africa, with all the craziness around coronavirus? Are you kind of okay? Are you impacted much? Are you dealing check with it okay? Ear. Check my ear. Check it's my awesome. ear. I did a, I, I was, <laughs> is it a home I, job? <laughs> this is a, listen, I'm going to turn around. <laughs> yes, <it's> yes. Bad. <laughs> Epic. <laughs> that is brilliant. Oh, Hawk. Listen, it is ridiculous because I was sitting in my house in my flat because I'm alone, um, yeah. which is a great thing. We can talk about that now. now. <laughs> um, but I was sitting here and I had a few bottles of wine and. Um, <laughs> And my hair, like it becomes really bushy on the sides here and also in the back because my hair grows back. <laughs> and it annoys me horribly. And um, I've got a clipper here and I thought, let me just trim the next thing. I, I managed to get myself into a mohawk. And, and I have to say, there was two bottles of wine involved as well. So don't drink alone with a pair of clippers around you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. classic. Oh, it looks I think, pretty I, think, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I don't know how you guys are doing it where, where you are. But no, so this thing has been interesting in so many ways, I, I, I think, for so many people, isn't it? Um, everyone, I think, has got some, some difficulty with this thing, but, but it could be different for many people, right? So, I mean, I, for me, it is being alone for three, four weeks, however long this thing is. For someone else, it is being with the whole family and the kids in an apartment for two, three days. So it's the contrary. And mm. for someone else, it is the fact that and in week three, there was no more money for food in South Africa. This is a fact. This is reality. And so I think this thing is, is so interesting. And it's so interesting in terms of what people are going to learn from this and come out of this thing. Uh, it's like, I mean, we, you guys probably spoken about it as well. This is uncharted territory. It's unheard of what's happened here. Um, we are lucky that we've never been in a war. Our mm. fathers and f maybe grandfathers have been in a war. This is on par, in my opinion, with a, a war. There's, people are getting so stretched in terms of uh, what, what is normal. What is normal now? Normal is not the normal anymore. What it, what it was three, four weeks ago. So interesting times. And I, you know, you, you don't want to say you're excited to be in it, but I think in times like this, and I talk about it in, in my talk as well, in, in times of hardship, that's time, that is the time when you grow or, or, or I don't want to say die. It's a horrible word or, or, or fail. So I think a lot of people are going to come out of this thing uh, better in business, 
upskill themselves, fitter, leaner, whatever it is. And there's going to be people that come out of this thing and go, oh, I've just wasted bloody five, six, or seven weeks, or however long we're going to be in it. So interesting, mm -hmm. man. Interesting. Yeah. I agree more. Yeah, interesting but. times for sure. And I think we, it's like anything in life. If you choose to see it through a lens of something positive, then that's always going to be a good thing, you know, or, or you can see it as a sort of a doom and gloom. How are we going to, you know, what are we going to do from here kind of lens? Then, then it's going to be much harder moving forward. That's a, that's so, so I want to touch on that quickly, if you don't mind. So uh, on my talk that I do to, to businesses about, um, Positivist, positivity, what you see, uh, thoughts, thought processes, uh, um, identifying certain thoughts. And what you just said there, I use, I say to people, if you, if you today decide that you want to buy a red Toyota Corolla and you start researching for two or three days on the internet, on AutoTrader, uh, what the prices are for a red Toyota Corolla, in day three and four, you start noticing red Toyota Corollas on the road. Mm. All of a sudden, there are more and more red Toyota Corollas. It is not that there's not been red Toyota Corollas before. It's always been there. But all of a sudden, you've opened your mind to certain data coming in. You, 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 as, uh, as, is the word perceptive? As, uh, mm. I'm a Dutch. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I don't get the English. <laughs> you, yeah, you've opened perceiving. your yeah, mind. Yeah. yeah, you've opened your mind for that, for that particular data. And that's the same with... Um, your thought and your thought processes if you if you allow yourself to see the negative stuff and if you focus on the if you think this is such a cuck time right now and how the hell am i going to get past this and how am i going to get money you will amplify that thought and that idea whereas if you almost lie to your to your own mind a little bit and say look we don't have a lot of money now i don't have a lot of money but i'm going to make this work and i'm going to make this work by doing this and this and this and that and your mind you'd almost trick your mind and i've learned this through and you guys know this better than i do um you, you, you can trick your mind almost a little bit in 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 believing the little lies that you tell yourself in a positive way not in a bad way in a positive way and you start seeing then the yellow toyota corolla but it's not it's not the negative part it's the, it's the good part mm. makes sense yeah 100 yeah, percent. but it's like there's you know saying some positive affirmations or whatever it is to yourself first thing in the morning, you know, you kind of like becomes part of your thinking. Um, yeah. And it is like, in a way it is tricking, like you said a little bit, but, um, but it does become part of your thought process. And, you know, if you can just make that little tweak and kind of get out of that kind of maybe negative spiral or whatever, it, it really does make a big difference. And, mm. you know, I think, I think we really have to try and keep that little bit of um, optimism um, with what's going on, you know, like it, it, I think it certainly is a roller coaster. It doesn't matter who you are, even if you're like the most positive, um, you know, optimistic person, you're probably going through a roller coaster of emotions, you know, like, um, and, and that's okay, you know, that's okay. Um, but we do have to keep that little bit of optimism and, and kind of try to trick our brain, like you said, to, to get through this, but because, you know, we, we will get through it. Um, but, uh, yeah, we don't know when, of course, but, um, mm. but we, uh, but we have, where are you guys it. isolating? Where are you, where are you two now? Yeah. So I'm actually in Brazil. Um, so it's, there's not really a hell of a lot of isolation where we are, to be honest with you, but like I go to the beach every single day for, you know, I can go there all day if I want sort of thing. Um, really? so, so yeah, so we're really lucky, like, um, and yeah, Craig is in Australia and I think you have yeah, the I mean, same. Gold coast and it's very similar. It's, it, you know, people have been. There's, there's so much news, there's so much information we're receiving, and that's part of that anxiety that can creep in. However, the reality on the ground in Australia currently is actually, is actually fairly uh, good. And um, they, you know, the, 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 the feeling amongst people is that things are starting to turn for the, for the better now. So um, mm. you know, it really is dependent on where you are. That makes a real difference as to uh, the way you're feeling things right now. Well, and you know what? That's a good point because... There is no way I can like I know that our uh, leadership they've done a great job, you know. Hats off to our guys. Um, but also I hear them say we've we've looked at the other countries and we've we've looked at all the um, information and data from Europe, but we're not Europe and we're not Australia and we're not New Zealand. We are not a first world country. We, although we we'd like to think that we can 
you know, use that information. We, we can't use all of that. We've, we've got to have our own thing because, yeah, we've got many, many, many different challenges to what you guys have got. Uh, I would imagine Brazil has got the same because um, we're talking about uh, different classes in terms of income uh, mm. so you've got a lot of r uh, wealthy people and a lot of poor people and and that's two different all, all together two different camps uh, and you've got to almost treat them differently so i've kind of i think i've kind of yesterday i've had a little bit of a uh, look on 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 on, in, on the internet and, and i think yeah they've realized that they can't just think they're going to do it like in europe and i think they're going to start start slowly uh, letting it go um because already the mines have got given uh, go ahead yesterday to open and a few other things so i think it's changing already they realize so i don't know what do, what do you guys think about the herd immunity compared to this total lockdown vision yes but i think i think you know what it's such like a dynamic situation that i don't know craig and i we, we speak about it all the time i almost think like kind of all bets are off the table in some sort of way because it just seems to be, you know, there's new information always coming out and, um, you know, like it, so it's just difficult to kind of go, what is the right thing and what is the wrong thing? Um, and this, so, this is what I find a problem with the world right now, right? Is there's experts in everything, but then within that, like you'll have one expert, you know, talking about the same subject who will say something over here and you'll have another expert saying something over here, like the complete opposite. So like, which oak do you listen to? You know, like it's so mm -hmm. confusing. And, and I think, yeah, I think this is the problem, like uh, trying to identify what is actually, what to actually listen to and what is the truth and what is the right thing to do. Um, there's always probably a middle ground somewhere, you know, so it, it's, a, it's such a difficult one. And, and flipping, geez, I'm no expert at all, bud. So <laughs> I would have no idea. Craig would have much better of an idea around that. I think you're right though, Gareth. I think it also like, who, who do we trust? How, how far do we go with trust? Do we trust each other? Do we trust ourselves, our own wisdom? Do we trust the government? Um, it's really hard. Like that's been a really tough sort of thing to navigate in some ways. And in my sort of limited thinking, and, and this is seriously just a, a thought that I thought near the beginning of this was like, if this virus is, is so uh, sort of attaching or attached to the elderly, can't we sort of quarantine the elderly in some way, shape or form, like really strictly and then and, and put pump money into supporting that uh, and, and then try and keep the economy driving with sort of the younger population? Obviously, who knows once again, like how, how these things work and what the correct way is. But, um, you know, it, it's uh, look, it seems to be have worked in some places, uh, the, the isolation story. And um, so at the end of the day, it's like uh, we have to as time will tell what the best strategy is going to be, I suppose. And one day we'll listen to this podcast and maybe have a few more answers, you know? No, listen, and, and that's it. So Garrett just mentioned something there that I've got, I mean, I've been struggling with big time lately. So you can, we can right now go and research the color of this bottle. And like you've said, you will get two or three very intelligent uh, views that, will be so strong to convince you that they are three different colors. That is just, that is just, the, uh, you, uh, even if you look at religion now, and, 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 and sorry to, I don't know if you're religious or not, but if you, if you look at religion, you will get some of the most clever people in the world. Two camps. I know that that, that guy is a very bright guy, and that guy as well, and both of them, I've got respect for and both of them have got a different view on a thing like religion and both of them have got points if you're kind of neutral that can make sense both ways and this is the difficulty thing and, and then again we've got we've got we've got this thing they you know they call it susan from facebook like that that <laughs> everyone, everyone, everyone is, a, is a specialist on every bloody field and it's so hard and there's all that information and so if you just if you if you if you're part of the 70 or 80% of the people in the world that don't go and actually read a book, that just feed off social media, who do you believe? Who's but right? But AJ, what, take, take, um, take a diet and like our, um, the food we should be eating. Like there's a prime example. Like how do we not know what the best thing to do is in this day and age? But yes. you literally cannot, I mean, we, we spend so much time talking about this and we're still like, okay, what's the, what's the truth here? And it's so difficult. And that's something that's the most basic thing there is, you know? Yes. And, and also it changes, right? So 10 exactly. years ago, 
there was something that I've learned, for example, playing rugby at the high level at sport, and that was the ultimate. This is what we've got to eat. Five yeah. years later, that kind of got put on the side. No, no, this is a new thing now. And then they can, with, with obviously, they back it up with information. That's actually better. And so it changes all the time. <laughs> it's, it's hard, crazy. man. <laughs> yeah, but it is, it's, it is kind of confusing, you know, like in, in, in so many ways. And um, I think, yeah, it, it helps to, I guess, have an open mind in a lot of this and also to, you know, try not be judgmental because, you know, everyone does have different views and we need to just respect those views of people and sometimes go, okay, cool. And just shrug your shoulders and go, cool. Mm. <laughs> you That's know, right. like, um, so, so yeah, but it's a, it's, it certainly is an interesting time to be alive, which is, which is pretty cool. And I think it's, it's fortunate as well that we are creating conversations around these things, you know, like, um, it's at least it's getting people interested and that's mm. cool because maybe before we weren't interested in a lot of the stuff we're talking about, but they are important things. So, you know, at some point in the future, maybe we'll sort of all come to the middle and, and find the sort of right thing on all these subjects, but Do you we might think also so? not. No, no, no. I'm just saying, no, we might also not, you know, <laughs> yeah. we probably won't, but we, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting, but that's for sure. Yeah. I think it's important also just that what you said, then I think it's important that you've got people that see, the left you've got you have to get people that see the right and somewhere in the middle there's got to be like you say always something that keeps the uh, equilibrium I'm, I'm really impressing myself with my language today no, yes, no, this, this is, is good <laughs> this has been amazing uh, awesome keep it, coming. keep it coming <laughs> equilibrium yeah, nice. classic buddy classic man so look um let's uh yeah let's get on to onto your story but and i just wanted to sort of start off with like a, a little story and and maybe it'll it'll lead into something and it's just like it's just from like me as a little boy right like as a little boy like I was rugby mad, all sport mad, to be honest with you. And, um, you know, I think as, as kids, we entertain ourselves, you know, and what I used to do, but <laughs> I used to take the, the end of a toilet roll. So, you know, like the brown bit to the middle, right? And I would literally, no jokes, I would spend hours in my bedroom and I would place this little toilet roll in like different places. And I had like a ensuite bathroom, right? And I was super lucky. And um, yes, I would um, I would like play my left foot versus my right foot. Okay, no jokes. And I would go, okay, cool. If I kick it in and it goes in with out of bounces, it's like it's going over the post. So it's, it's like it's three points. And if, if it say it bounces once, it's like a, a conversion. So it's one or two points. I think it was like one back in the day. <laughs> and I would literally <laughs> play for hours, left foot against right foot, right? And pretend I was like Joel Stransky. And then I was Nas Buerta. And then I was all these oaks, right? And um <laughs> This is how I used to entertain myself for hours as a kid. And I was just kind of wondering, like, did you have anything like that yourself? Did you have any of these little games that you would play, like, you know, um, as, a, as a kid? Um, and, yeah, and, like, who were your heroes growing up as a, you know, as a little huh. rugby player or as a sportsman in South Africa? Well, firstly, I... Um now it's post quarantine. No one will kick toilet paper anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Very true. So, uh, yeah, man. Thanks for the question. So, I grew up on a uh, sheep farm in the southern Free State, a place called Batuli um, in the Karua. Uh, I hated it. Not hated it. I actually thought it was boring then, but now. So many days, I just, want to, I just want to drive to the Karoo. It's so beautiful. It's so dry and it's so barren, but it's a special, beautiful man. The, 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 the center of South Africa, it's such a special place. Um, we actually not, where I grew up wasn't too far from Sutherland, uh, which is the one of the most uh, famous places to uh, look into the uh, atm what, um, stars and uh, stuff. Stars, Cosmos. Star viewing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's got a very, um, it's so dry there's never uh, clouds and there's no pollution there so people find it really cool to to what's the word man uh, stargaze or stargaze. stargazing yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah thank you so i, I grew up there I've, and and I, I tell the story um in my little talk as well you know i'm so 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 fortunate that i was all I was always a tall guy. I was born tall. Um, I was lucky to <clears throat> be fairly fast and nimble for my height, <clears throat> and I was very fortunate that my dad gave me 
this leather rugby ball. Do you remember those old Springbok yeah. uh, yeah, rugby bad. ball? So you get the dubbin like, on it. Yes, <laughs> man. And, um, and so my dad gave me, you know, this as a present. I can't remember, four or five years old. I don't know. I just remember having a rugby ball. So, so naturally, by having this natural given talent and having uh, 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 grown up in a time where it was really you, uh, you were really fortunate if you if you was a white person in at that time when i say fortunate that's the wrong word um privileged uh, privileged there we go sorry thank you you're gonna help me the whole time today okay no, no, that's good, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so, so i was very very privileged to be that age born in that space that i could that i we had enough money for rugby ball um, and i had this natural uh, attributes to play the sport so this became just, I had this ball. It was my toy. I played this toy. I used this toy with my natural attributes. And that became just my sport. And that became eventually my work. And that be, made me a springbok. And I always explain to people this, that if, if rugby players out there say and pretend that it's hard, then they, they're probably in the wrong game. You know, if, if, if they reach that level, it means that, physically they uh, lucky already to have those attributes they uh, you know by hook or by crook they've gotten introduced to this sport and so they're very lucky and i count myself really really lucky to have played this game and and i say this not being full of myself it became it it was easy for me i just i just did what i did for fun and of course there was a lot of training and a lot of hard hours and long hours when you became professional but but really, is that hard? No, it's not hard. I mean, and you get paid to do something that that you like. So, I really, really see myself uh, as 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 fortunate to to have had that history. That that also comes with its challenges eventually when you start retiring and that. But what's another story? So yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing, and I'm so lucky that I've that I've had that opportunity. Sure. Tell me about we, it. We, 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 yeah, we're glad that you uh, found it easy and we got to watch you on the field making it look easy. So that's, <laughs> that's really awesome. So I was actually laughing sorry, the other day because we, I did another interview and, and um, one of the questions that always comes out uh, is, did you club Pete Van Sale? I don't know if you remember that thing <laughs> where, the, where the supporter ran onto the field yeah. and um, tackled the and you tackled Mc McCall, what? myself and Richie kind of grabbed him to take him off the ref. But I'm saying, I cannot believe that of, out of my whole career, that's, that's one of the two questions that always comes up. <laughs> Come on, surely not, man. Oh, just so you know, but we, 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 di we didn't have it because I, I checked no. the Oaks had asked you before. So I was like, no, you've gone there. <laughs> <laughs> so did you clap him? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, classic. <laughs> uh, classic, man. Mm. So, so listen, AJ, look, obviously you had all these talents and stuff and you had this privilege and you had the and a family that encouraged sports and things like that, which is amazing. But did you have any other like twinkles in your eyes? You know, like I wanted to maybe be a fireman or, or there were other things that you maybe wanted to be uh, when you grew up, you know? Yeah, for sure. So again, because we were, I was, I was pretty lucky to, to, to be on a farm. My dad had this farm. I, I've always wanted to be a farmer. That was, and obviously my dad wanted to be me, a, to, me to be a farmer so that I can take over the farm. That's obviously what, what dads want, want you to do. Um, so, so for a long, long time, I, I was always thinking, okay, I'm going to become a farmer. And we've, we've had this, um, sheep farm in, in, the, in, like I said, in the Southern Free State, um, next to a nature reserve called the Afrikaans who were a fear of old And so we always, we, we always had game on our, on our farm, Kudus Yelanda, big game. So hunting became a big thing on our, on our farm. Um, we always had Americans come over when the winter months come in and then they would hunt there. So I, at one stage, I really started enjoying hunting and um, at, to the extent where I was thinking, uh, we, you know, if I'm, if I'm grown up, would there be an opportunity to, be, to go into professional hunting, that kind of stuff. So, oh. um, but uh, they just 
to finish the hunting story, I'm actually for a long time became a vegan. And uh, I was going to ask that. But <laughs> <laughs> after many, many years, a few things happened. Um, and I stopped, I stopped hunting around about 24 or five and I've never shot anything since. So I've wow. never killed an animal since. Uh, it's a long story, but I actually, we went out shooting one night and I accidentally, I was going to shoot a bull and I, somehow in the night, in the light, I made a mistake and I shot this little calf. And wow. when we got there, um, the, there was this little calf lying there and that killed me. That broke oh. me to pieces. I, I, I sold my gun straight after that. Wow. Never, never shot an, an animal since then. So it was about, what, that's like 23, no, I'm lying, 25 years ago. Wow, man. So, yeah, that's um, with the hunting side. And um, I've always wanted to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah, I actually, when I, was, when I was playing rugby, I bought myself a micro light. And, I, and for about three or four years, huh. I was flying uh, my micro light around Durban on the beaches. I love it. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> That's flipping cool, but yes, I always used to. They actually, where I'm staying here in Brazil, they have tons of oaks. Not they're not micro lights, but they're almost like these parachutes with a sort of yeah. hovercraft fan behind them. And yes, it just yeah. looks like so much fun, but crazy. That's called a paraglider. I love those. I really want to try <laughs> that one. I've never tried it. I really want to try that. Yeah, yeah, yes, it looks like a hell of a lot of fun. I swear. Yeah. Um, no man, that's that's so cool, but and so so are you are you still vegan now? So I've now so, so the, let me just explain the reason why I became vegan is my cholesterol went uh, really really high and and over seven years my doctor tracked my cholesterol it tracked it uh, every year we say to me listen um, I can see it's going up you must be careful and when it came to like year five he said to me okay it's it's really going high. And year five, six, and seven, it, it, it made what they call the hockey stick. It mm. did that. It just went really, and the bad cholesterol as well. And I, uh, one weekend, he actually gave me the script. He said, listen, you need to go get uh, the, these, these pills. And I've done a bit of research on the pills, and I realized that they're not that great. So I thought, okay, and I, I'm not going to get them straight away. And then I watched that program called What the Health uh, one Sunday afternoon. And that really like hit home with me. And I thought, yes, like um, I don't have to have cholesterol because my mom and dad had cholesterol. That it doesn't have to be hereditary. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm eating what they're eating. Um, mm. And maybe I should try and change that. And I literally that Sunday night went into my fridge and I cleaned out it's like the all animal products. Right? Well, I, 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 I didn't realize that like I was so ignorant to that, to, to that, that I thought, I, I thought it's only meat. And then I realized no, but there's no cheese, no milk, no eggs. Oh my goodness. Okay. So it's really everything. And I didn't know what, to, so I cleaned my whole fridge and started just teaching myself little uh, meals, easy, easy meals, like internet, quick, easy, vegan meal. And um, four months later, I tested myself and I was normal. So for seven years of gradual climbing and four months later, my cholesterol was back to normal. So again, I say to everyone, we're all different in, in, in our bodies. We're all different in our minds. We're all, we're all different. For me, going vegan for, for a time really, really, really helped me. So that was about three, four years ago. Slowly, slowly, I've kind of gotten to like a very nice medium where I don't eat as much meat as I used to before because yeah. before I used to eat meat every day, sometimes twice a day. You know, I'm an Afrikaans guy. We, you know, that's how we eat. And so I've got myself into a nice little rhythm now where I'll eat three, two or three times a week. I'll eat meat. Um, I'll, 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 I'll check how much milk and cheese. I just keep it to little pieces. And I manage my cholesterol is keeping absolutely perfect. Well done, man. That's epic. Yeah. So yeah. it's such a great story of, of, not being a slave to the genes that we receive from our parents necessarily. And so, so yeah. you've just proven a massive point for a lot of people, you know, but do you think Craig that, I mean, is everything, a, or, or do you think there's maybe some things that are hereditary and you can't get away with it and other things that, that is not hereditary that, that we actually just, it, we learn it from the elders rather than it actually being a chemically hereditary does that make sense what I'm trying to ask? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, massively. I, I think, look, I, I think we, we've definitely spoken about, we spoke to Bruce Lipton on this podcast, actually, and he speaks a lot about epigenetics. I was so jealous. I was so jealous. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, so Bruce, that, that's what he talks about, you know, and so a large proportion of our, uh, of our health 
or, or dis-ease in our body is related to the things we choose to do day to day and our lifestyle choices. So, um, and, and exactly what you said, um, is it a genetic thing or is it based on because that family being in that family, there's a certain stress factor within the rituals of that family versus the genes. So I get what you're saying. And I think Bruce actually did have a story about that in our chat where they would have, uh, there was a girl that had uh, the family had this family history of cancer. Then there was an adopted child. The adopted child obviously didn't have the genetics, but she lived in this family with the same foods, with the same stress factors uh, and ultimately ended up getting the same kind of cancer, which was, obviously it's pretty odd and and that sort of speaks to the piece that you're talking about there so it's fascinating but i think if you have to choose you might as well choose for the for the better lifestyle choices and not be a victim to think well i'm i'm resigned to the fact that i'm going to have to be on the statins and the cholesterol meds for the rest of my life because my parents yes. were and also like let's let's for one second okay so that's food and um, and genetics and and and, and cancer etc so if you like I, I i see it very much similar if you step away and you look at um mental um mm -hmm. spiritual all those other factors also are we so so often i i, I speak to people and and the guy and the guy the girl says yeah but that that's me that's that's who i am mm -hmm. okay well let's have a look at that quickly because what what makes me what makes you what makes all of us it's you, you, you and and if and, and again for people who've heard me say this, I'll, um, I apologize. But I always explain that this is the best way to explain. You, when you're born, you're this little bundle of nothing. You can't even stand. You can't talk. You can't. You can basically just breathe and poo. That's all you can do and eat. And so from there, you you get a name. Someone else gives you a name. So all of a sudden, if you imagine an onion, there's nothing in the onion. Then there's a the little layer. So I've got a name. I've got a certain skin color. Yeah. I speak a certain language. My mom and dad eat certain things. They believe a certain religion. They mm -hmm. believe in certain things. You go to a certain school. And, now, and so you learn things. You learn things as you go along. This little onion just gets more and more layers. And you go to, for me, I started playing rugby. That became a big thing, a, a big layer. And I had to shed that layer later because it wasn't really me. That was just something <laughs> there. It, it was a false thing, a famous rugby player. That was rubbish. And so I had to shed that thing. And so, and so we, when, when someone said to me, yeah, but I, that's me. That, that's who I am. Okay, cool. So this is, you are what you've learned from people around you what, and what you've learned yourself. That doesn't mean that's who you are. If you really want to, if you feel that you need to change, if you feel you need to, if you're not comfortable with what you believe in, if you're not comfortable with what you eat, if you're not comfortable with your physique, maybe you must sit for a second and go, okay, I can actually change. I can change the way I eat. I can change the way that I believe. Um, I can change the way I practice and train. So so many times I look and I think, Shit, I wish that person can just realize that he doesn't have to go down that route. He can change it. That's not easy, right? I mean, it's not easy. It's pretty difficult to change. Normally change come, like I said before, when there's real hardship, because then people have to, you have to, you, you've got to survive. So when life is just going on, it's very hard to change what you've learned over the last 20 or 30 years. You need something to shake you and say, okay, I, I can actually change. I hope I'm not ruffling on too much, but I, it's, it's, um, it's something that's quite important to me. Yeah, for sure. I think you like, you, 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 you form this identity, don't you? Like, and, and you're like, this is who I am, you know, like, and um, you, you almost maybe in some ways, sometimes you become proud of that identity um, and maybe unwilling to change um, because it, maybe it gives you some sort of status or whatever. And, and that's a trap. You know, we, 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 mm. we, we really need to be conscious of, of who we are and where we are at that point in time and, and not scared to change. And I think that is half the problem is people become scared of the change. Um, and then, and, and that can go in like a downward spiral, you know? Mm. Um, so it's super important what you're saying, but like that, that identity, we need to be able to shed it, to actually grow and to become somebody else if we, if we, if we do want to do that. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of people, unfortunately, you know, they, they don't get that far, you know, they don't have that kind of self-awareness 
uh, to realize that they're stuck in a trap. Um, yeah. And, you know, and anything is possible, you know, kind of if you want to change, you can. But, um, you know, you, you, you're a good example. You've proven it. You know, you've had like these two different lives, um, you know, professional sportsman and now a businessman and a speaker and all these sort of things. And all of us actually do have this opportunity if we want to do it. You know, you, you can literally go, you know what, I want to flip and do something else and uh, I'm going to do it and, and just take those little f first steps, you know, don't be scared yeah. to take those little first steps because it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Big time. Yeah. That, that is so important. Taking that first step. That is the important thing, isn't it? Because, uh, because you look at it and it looks like a bloody mountain in front of you, whatever, whether if it's even, even if it's just your job doing something right at first, but once you've taken that small step, it also gives you so much comfort. Once you've taken that small step, you guys have definitely seen that, a uh, YouTube clip of that general in America that's saying, that's saying, make your bed. Mm -hmm. Such a beautiful, beautiful, and that's similar. Yeah. Just, just make your bed. And, and I swear to you before that, I sometimes used to make my bed. Sometimes I didn't. And after I've watched that video a few years ago, it made, it rang so true to me. And once you've done it, it gives you that sense of it. That's the word. That's what he said. That sense of achievement. Already you mm -hmm. feel the day is going well. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, it's so funny, but I would have thought you had a strict like uh, Afrikaans father. He would have gone, you flip and make your bed before you wake up and get out of your bedroom. <laughs> no, they did. They did. But you know, when you're light, you don't listen until you learn it yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Man. So, so um, you grew up in like a, obviously a, an important and, and kind of difficult and unknown, no, not unknown, but just a, like a strange time in South Africa during apartheid. But um, do you have any kind of memories of what that was like? And I've also heard you mention that you kind of grew up in the Texas um, of South Africa. You had a better word for it or a better term. Um, but yeah, what were your memories of it? Maybe you can kind of share for like our international audience what, uh, you know, what it was like for you. Yeah, I, thank you. I've got, a, I've got real, real good memories of, of that time. Uh, so that's actually a good way to explain it. It's like the Texas. It's, it's, a, it's a real arid, barren uh, landscape. It's, it's rocky. Um, and, and, and I never, ever knew that we had dangerous snakes around. Only now when I turned like 29, 30 years old, I started learning about, which is called, we call it the Gilslang, which is the King Cobra. It's, it's one of the most dangerous snakes in the world. It's like the Mamba in, in KZN and, and Puff Adders. Uh, those two snakes are they rampant in in that place and i remember as a kid my dad used to i mean i had a uh, uh, my very first gun i must have gotten like when i was six or seven i think around about there it was a you know these air guns um and then an upgrade from there a 0 0.22 caliber and then a, a, tri a, a triple two and then a 3006 so yeah and so i mean by the time i was 13 i had a proper 3006 caliber that's something that can kill a well not a buffalo but like a kudu or a yellow and i remember as a lighty waking up in the morning uh taking my point to to i'm talking now seven a year six years old and disappearing for the day into the rocks starting to yeah. hunt for dussy which is a little small little rabbit like thing um and and birds and all these kind of things and and, and honestly, I look back now and I'm thinking, my God, that was ridiculous, actually. <laughs> Knowing how many snakes were uh, it still is in that area. But uh, it, those are good memories, man. It, it's, it's, um, I, I really grew up in like an incredibly harsh, tough environment. And, and I suppose, again, those are things that make you. Those are things that mold you as you go along. Mm. Did you do four trackers and things like that as a youngster? Like do those where you learn yeah. how to live off the land and things like that? We didn't have four trackers there. That was, that was way too far out. <laughs> it, it? Was the, it was the fancy kids in Joburg and Bloom and those places. That <laughs> <laughs> that four you just lived, you lived it every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They learned about it. I was out there doing it. <laughs> oh, classic. And so, you know, yeah, so talking about being out a bit in the sticks, um, I suppose you still went to school and things like that. And, uh, you know, what was, what was schoolboy rugby? I mean, it's such a big thing in South Africa, schoolboy rugby. Were there, were there some big crowds? Was it, was it ever televised? Did you, what were your memories of schoolboy rugby? 
No, so definitely not televised. I, I, and that's something that was a bit strange for me as, uh, you know, the years went on, super sports started getting a little bit uh, prevalent in, in, in rugby. And so we, uh, again, on, on, in Batuli, where it was, uh, where, I, where I grew up in my pri primary school days, uh, they, there was a rugby field and the, they called us the pink footer. So the under eights or under nines, their first team, the, the youngest team, they start in the morning and it's freezing cold, and the free state is cold, guys. It goes minus overnight. So uh, when you wake up, if it's 9 o'clock, the field is still frozen. Um, and th there's, I don't know if you know, uh, Afrikaans called double keys, these little thorns, these little hard thorns. Mm. I'll never forget how many mornings on a Saturday morning we used to run out, and it's just thorns oh. on your feet and frozen fields. Yeah. But again, it was a jaw, and so throughout that, uh, throughout my primary uh, school uh, career, that's how we played rugby. I then moved to Bloom in the Free State, um, and there obviously we started. Up, I went to a school, bigger school, a thousand kids in the school. Um, but even then, we didn't have um, television. Now, now obviously, high school kids uh, they've got these uh, weekend uh, rugby festivals and 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 super sporters there. So. It's, it's, it's changed dramatically in terms of exposure uh, um, that you had on TV. And I suppose that's why also I hear this, and I don't know the truth, <clears throat> so don't hold me to this, but I hear there's, there's so much um, in drugs and uh, in, 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 in what do you call it? Enhancement drugs. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> pardon me, steroids uh, already at school level because I would imagine if you're in school, and you know you want to be on TV, and already now your uh, school team is playing on TV, and so they, you, you're exposed to this fame of being a professional sportsman. And um, and 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 also another thing I just hear uh, a lot of the f f mums and dads encourage that kind of thing. Um, you know they want their kids to do their well. They want them to earn that money that you know, the top rugby players earn, which is obviously it looks great and fantastic. So um, if that is true, I, I, I hope it's not, man. But I hear that, that, that families are actually encouraging uh, boys that are showing a bit of potential to do it. And, you know, all I can say to those kids is don't do it. Don't, don't, don't get stuck into, don't get caught up with that stuff. Um, you know, my whole career, I've never, ever seen one steroid i've never been offered a steroid i've heard that it is prevalent i've heard that it's out there um i've never spoken to one of my mates about it at that level when i played professional rugby maybe i was just really ignorant about it but if you're gonna i i reckon if you're good enough you'll make it uh, i don't know if in sport if in rugby cycling is another game right it's something else those folks are just absolutely ridiculous in terms of where they push themselves but i think in our game i think you can make it without it mm. yeah you, you it, it's it's you like you need the skill don't you you know what i mean like you can't just flip and take some steroids get huge and then be good at rugby you you need that skill too so you would think the skill kind of like overshadows being massive it, in yeah. in some regards but I, but look i also if there's many guys with skills so I think what happens is there's so many guys with skills and there's five or 10 guys in one position. And some of the guys might just think, okay, well, how am I going to make it? I need something else. I need something else to help me. Here. But again, I think natural ability and, and, and hard work is the only way it's the, it's the way to do it. It's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm really glad to hear that you, that you say that and you encourage that, you know, that's really good for, for younger Oaks to hear like seriously, don't take that cuck like you will regret it when you're older like your body will kind of you know who knows what it actually does you know maybe it's not terrible terrible but but just but don't go there you know like it's just yeah. i don't think it's a good thing um and no. yeah craig Oss, i mean you would know like more about how bad that stuff is for your body hey oh, well i mean for sure but i, I guess it's like anything, like you've got to make choices in life. And uh, if these things come your way and uh, you, you've got to first educate yourself, understand what you're doing, if you're going to decide to do these things and do it, uh, you know, the right way. And, and generally speaking, a doctor is not going to give you this stuff because they understand that this is 
not going to be good for your body and you're going to be way more inclined to like injure yourself and uh, contrary to what people think you get big and strong but you actually become more brittle um, and so it's actually long term you're just going to become more injury prone and uh, so you know it's, it's actually counterintuitive um, you'd rather just get rock hard from training hard uh, without these kind of supplements sure you know take take some of the other supplements if you really need to but yeah, generally speaking as we spoke about you can get most things from a good diet and good training and good mm-hmm. rest actually so yeah i think that's kind of the if people can make the focus on make that sexy you know uh, then then we don't have to think about these other things you know Greg, I don't know if you've seen uh, on Netflix, there's a few, a few of these documentaries now where they follow these uh, real legend bodybuilders. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and the one, the name is a very famous name. I can't, it's not coming to me now. And they are now 40, 50 years old. And what these guys look like, you cannot believe what these drugs did to them. Yeah, I would, mad, I eh? would advise all kids, if you're thinking of taking drugs, go to Netflix now and, and look for these <laughs> yeah. and, and just watch an hour and a half and you, you'll understand what they're what not well. Eh? Yes. Yeah. No, you're right. Eh? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and like, they just look, like they actually look ridiculous, you know, like the, the shape of their bodies is crazy. Um, yeah. my, my, cause I've actually, I've actually competed in bodybuilding like back in the day um, on, on the stage and stuff, which was flipping great fun. I loved it. And it was, 100%. we've got to put a photo on. We've got to put a photo on. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll show you, but <laughs> actually, it's, it's a speedo, my man. Actually, Re- seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but, but my first, uh, my first coach, uh, his, uh, his name is John, John Park and his dad is a guy called Reg Park. Who you, who you might be aware of. He actually was Mr. Universe three times and, um, he was uh, Arnie's hero, actually. And wow. this oak didn't um, take uh, anything whatsoever. And um, he he got really upset, like, with the actual industry because it became like, you know, you actually had to take them if you wanted to compete. Um, so, yeah, it's amazing how things change and how it almost becomes normalized. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. say in, in bodybuilding, like if you want to compete in Olympia, you have to take it. There's no ways those oaks are not flipping on it. You know, you don't sure. get that massive naturally. Um, but then it's also sad how, like you said, it, it sort of finds its way into other sports, you know, and there's this massive pressure to actually take them because you want to compete at that level. You know, it doesn't have to be mm. regular. You, can, you, you watch like those documentaries like you mentioned on Netflix, you know, for Oaks to make it into the, the Olympic teams and stuff that they have to kind of do this thing. And, and it's just, it's kind of really sad how we, how we've kind of got there. Mm. No, no, big time. I agree. Yeah. Can't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. So bad. This uh, little Afrikaans uh, grew up in, in the free States and then after school, I, I think you went and spent a few years in Italy. Is that right? Oh man. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. What a beautiful time in my life. I, so you must now remember. So I, like I said, I'm still in the free state. I've only been to Johannesburg and Cape Town a few times playing for the under 21s, never been overseas. Um, I probably wear at the time khaki clothes. I don't know, very close. <laughs> and, and the next thing uh, I got uh, this opportunity to go play rugby in Italy in a place called Rovigo. Um, now Rovigo, I've never heard of the place before, but I've, I've heard of Venice and Rovigo is like 80, 100 kilometers, I don't know, from Venice, very close. And um, it was actually where Nas Buerta played. So Nas Buerta played a few years there before me, uh, a few years before me, and then I got the opportunity to go there. So it is a, obviously in, in Italy, soccer is a big thing, but in this town, rugby is everything. So uh, because of the legends that they had, the Gert Smal, uh, Nas Buerta, uh, and, and a few New Zealand guys over the years. So, man, I arrived there and first time overseas, don't know, I managed to get my flights, everything, I arrived there and the next thing, I am half an hour away by train from Venice. For the first two, three, four months, I twice a week just got into the train and just went to Venice and walked around. I could not believe that I am (laughs) in Venice. I live around the corner from Venice. Wow. And it was a beautiful time. And I, I, and again there, if I didn't do that, if I didn't have that opportunity to learn another culture and I actually speak Italian fairly well, 
Um, I, when I left there three and a half years later, I was fairly capable. I wouldn't say fluent, fairly capable of managing myself through all kinds of Italian conversation. And um, actually I actually had a point to make about, uh, oh yeah, so if, if I didn't have the opportunity to go there, I maybe would have been still in the free state and only have that knowledge of people, culture, beliefs, etc. But because I did that, it kind of threw me out to realize, okay, there's there's people that have got different beliefs and different views and eat differently. And that was the most beautiful thing for me um, going to Italy. Of course, playing rugby there, traveling around. But and having the opportunity to understand that, okay, there is not only one way in life. Like you said before, you've got to respect other people, their belief, because there are so many different beliefs and views on everything. And so for me, that was the most important thing that I've learned um moving to italy but i mean i almost i almost almost stayed there it was it was <laughs> at the end it was very close i got i was i got married to an italian lady uh, at the end um fantastic person beautiful woman <clears throat> and um i was so close to stay in italy and make it my make it my country make it my place <laughs> but uh there were some calls from home to get to get back and and would, maybe having the opportunity to play for the spring box. So I started seeing that as the real opportunity. So I kind of made the call to come back, but man, I love Italy. I, I cannot speak better of Italy. That, that three, three and a half years, I would easily say it's, it's right up there with the top years of my life. Loved it. Wow. What an opportunity, man. And just that growth that comes from look, just peeking outside of our own little boxes that we tend to find ourselves in there. What a, what a great opportunity Amazing. and yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. And also what a beautiful part of the world to be, to find yourself in, you know, it's, it's really, I suppose, chalk and cheese compared to where you were. Yeah. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm try, as we talk, as I'm talking, I'm going to uh, tell you about this book that I'm reading that, that, that speaks to, and I'm sorry, I forgot the name. Now give me a second. Uh, sorry. It's coming up now. Basically where, uh, not Richard Dawkins, not the DMT. We're going to talk about that now. No. <laughs> Outli out, Outliers from Mike, uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Did, mm. you, did you read the book? I, I've heard of it. I haven't read it though. Amazing. Amazing. And basically, the, 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 the big thing I got out of it is that he basically talks about uh, all these superhumans in the world. For example, Bill Gates. He mentions a few of them. For example, Bill Gates. Bill Gates is not the cleverest guy in the world. There are many guys that are as clever or possibly even knows more about him than computers. But what happened with Bill Gates is there's a few things in his lifetime that happened that, that, that formed his path to put him where he is. One of the things is he was just lucky enough to live around the corner from a university that had the very first computer, the very first computer university. No one else could play on computers. Of course, he had the natural instinct natural ability he's, he's clever enough yet all those things but he was the only guy in the world at the time that had access to a computer 15 minutes around the corner and at night it was for free he didn't have to pay for it nothing it it, al it aligned his way now if that happened to some other guy that has got the same uh, capabilities maybe he would have been bill gates today so having said that comes back to my uh, opportunity in italy that's something that happened to me and it and it changed my life uh, dramatically and at the time i didn't realize it but only now i'm looking back okay that italian stint changed a lot of my life further i played for the lions and from there i moved to durban i signed a contract that changed my life trajectory tremendously because yeah i met certain people and so your our lives go through these stages of of change all the time. Um, but that book is just, oh my God, one of the best books I've read, man. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's, it's amazing that you, you wonder sometimes, was it, was that just the planning or is that, is that the choices you made or, you know, that it can get quite interesting how these little things come along your way. These that change your little trajectory, just, just that little bit, you know? So 
but so you did end up that, that, sorry that's so that's the other thing that that I, I saw I watched a video the other day is it like you say is it planned is it um, supposed to be like that uh, is there someone planning this for us or is this mm -hmm. just the chaos and out of the chaos comes normality there's so much chaos around us and and and, and so many moving parts on on on, on every second daily mm. basis <laughs> what is the real thing is someone is there someone <laughs> that's that's sitting there, okay that is what's going to happen to you and your road and this and i'm going to send certain people over your road or over your path or is it just that this world is just absolute chaos and out of the chaos, there's so much chaos that there's got to be certain things. You've got to be pushed a certain way. It's amazing. There's a soup. We're in this crazy soup of possibilities and, and happenings and how, how, like, how does it even end up like that? And it's, you know, that's something we've definitely been chatting about a lot. And, you know, you can go into all things like, you know, law of attraction and you can talk about free will and, do these things even exist? And uh, is there some kind of predestined nature to our lives? And uh, definitely sometimes feels like that. And other times it feels like we, we get to choose exactly where we are. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, these are, these are really fundamental, interesting questions that we could probably spend a day talking about. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry if I go off every time. No, no, no this buddy, is good. We like, love it, but don't worry. This, man. Is the, this is the stuff of, um, of life. You know, this is, this is the beauty of questioning. And I think this is coming back to the coronavirus is like, okay, people are actually taking a moment, maybe sitting at home on their own. Like, like you've been for a few weeks now, you, you know, not necessarily that you're thinking about it now, but there's a time that, that someone might have to just actually think about these things. And I think finding your own truth within these times are, and in our lives in general are, is so important. So I think, mm. um, yeah, I think these are very, very important things to ask, but, uh, yeah, and just, 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 just a, sorry, sorry. Craig, just to interrupt there quickly, just, just to uh, not to harp on the Corona thing, but, um, but it's in line with what we're kind of talking about now. Like I, I was listening to this, like literally probably the best podcast I've listened to about the, the, this time that we're going through at the moment. And, and there was the one I sent to you the other day, Craig, and um, this guy called Charles Einstein on, um, or Eisenstein on Rich Roll. And he gave like, you know, different scenarios and these sort of things. And he's, and he's talking about now he's like, He's like, maybe now is just actually speeding up what our future was going to look like. He's like, because we were, you know, uh, sort of interacting less in person and um, more online. And now we're just online. Um, you know, we were doing these sort of things. You know, we were like, we just weren't sort of, you know, we weren't as close as we used to be. Uh, we were um, getting monitored more and more like, you know, through our, you know, what we do online and these sort of things, we're losing our privacy. So maybe this is just showing us um, what it's actually going to be like in the future. And therefore it's giving us a decision. Okay. Is this actually what we want? You know, do we actually want to be online as much? Do we actually want to have all this privacy or, you know, we probably don't, but like, you know, it's showing us what the future could look like in a much quicker way than it would have happened naturally. And it really made me kind of like think about, you know, wow, okay, we, do we want this? Don't we want this? I mean, personally, I know I definitely flip and don't, don't want all the kind of snooping and these sort of things and, and not seeing people and all that sort of stuff. And it was, yeah, that was one of many things that guy mentioned in the podcast. So, um, well, but listen, it's a, yeah. If you allow me go ahead, to, to go, to go mad, <laughs> <laughs> please. So, as a species, we are, we are so full of shit. We are so full of ourselves. We are so important. I mean, we, we right now through this, let's call, it, let's, call it nine, let's call it 12 months of unrest and unsettlement and people are going to die and people are going to lose money. Um, it's, it's 12 months, one year. In the spectrum of how long... And this is debatable, depends what your viewers and religion, etc. But in terms of how long this rock has been floating around the sun, this year is nothing. We are nothing. We are insignificant. 
and we get very imp- we 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 become we become very important and this is now the biggest thing the world has ever seen like everyone that's alive now in our lives this is the biggest thing that's ever mm. 60 years what is it 70 years ago there was a second world war that's 70 years ago this we, we, this is nothing even compared to that and the first world war but as 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 a as a species we are now the, li- the world is coming to an end and life is ending. No, it's not. This is nothing. And so I t- always try to, like, even now sometimes when I, when I sit and I go, oh, my God, uh, I'm getting bored. Then I remind myself of this thing. We are just a blip. We are just a grain of sand in the time and space of life. This is nothing. This will come and this will go. We must not be so important because we're not. We're not. Sorry, I need to get that off my chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 which part of that was you going crazy? That, that, I don't think any of that was. <laughs> okay, uh, is that normal? Okay, cool. <laughs> that, that was pretty good stuff. I, I think you're very right. I think there's a certain arrogance that we hold to think that human beings are separate from nature, and I think we've had this opportunity now to realize we just we're one of the chess players of of life and nature. We just we're all on the same board. We're all here together. We have some skill sets as human, you know, human animals, but um, we, we're all on, we need to learn that we're connected in a real deep way, all of us with animals, with nature as well. And uh, that, that's very humbling. And at the same mm-hmm. time, as you said, when we find boredom, we should never really be bored. We should be taking moments to see how lucky we are to, to be here in the short period of that little blip and, uh, mm-hmm. and observe how much beauty there is around us in people, in ourselves, in nature. And uh, yeah, I think it can be super empowering. Some people feel that that's very disempowering. And I think we all on the same page that that's one of the most empowering things we can feel is, is, um, and humbling, you know? So yeah, thanks for, for sharing. I also, there's, there's one other thing I've been playing around in my mind a little bit is <clears throat> that I think that as humans, we think that we're killing the world which is earth right we think we're killing the earth in effect we're not this thing will be uh billions no millions of years ago from now this rock will still be going around the sun the the difference is we might not be here there might not be elephants and might, might not be rhinoceroses there might be something else that evolved over many years that doesn't mean even breathe like we breathe because it might have come from this is crazy. I'm just using a name. Cockroaches, a cockroach, uh, and uh, rats. Those are the things that thrive in difficult times where there's no food. Maybe those are the things that are last standing, and maybe from that something will evolve in millions of years, and there'll be something. This earth will not disappear. People mustn't. Uh, we we think we're so important. Oh, we're killing this earth. No, you're not. You just you're just closing a cycle. And there'll be something else again, millions of years down the line. But this is a hard concept to understand for, for, for people. Yeah, but, but I mean, I totally agree with you. Like, um, you know, Mother Nature or, or like Earth, you know, she's been here, what, 14 billion years or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there's been like all these, these ice ages and stuff where civilizations and whatnot have disappeared before us. And, and we forget about that, you know, because we, mm. we only live like and we think we're important, like you said. Um, and totally bad, like people are, you know, like quite rightly worried about, you know, pollution and climate change and whatever, um, because it's affecting the planet and animals and stuff. But like you said, she will always survive. Mother nature mm-hmm. will always survive. There's almost no doubt about that, you know, and she will come back to, you know, even if you look back to like, say Chernobyl and stuff like that area now, there's wildlife and stuff going back there, but she will regrow and whatever. We are the ones that will die out for sure because we are flipping. We're not tough enough. We're not resilient enough, whatever. We might think we are, but yeah. we're not anywhere near as tough as Mother Nature. I couldn't agree with you more. There's another um, documentary that I watched a few days ago, and, and forgive me, I can't. It's, it's something, The Beautiful World of Fungi. And uh, um, his name is going to come to me now as well. Uh, Simit. Simit? Paul Samet. There we go. Well Stamets. Paul Samet. Stamet, yeah. Stamet. Stamets, Stamets. Um, have you seen that documentary of his? It's so beautiful. Not yet. It's on the list. Yeah. Oh man, it's so good. I've just watched it in the week where he, okay, but, and also for someone that, 
for people for people that doesn't understand or does not open to that kind of thing, it might be really challenging to understand uh, or, or, or believe him. But proven now that the mycelium uh, that is the is mycelium is the almost the tree of the of mushrooms any kind of mushroom and that is the stuff that grows under the earth under the soil in this thing he explains how mycelium is the biggest organism in the world it's everywhere it, it, it links trees they they now think that trees are communicating through mycelium because trees and plants their roots only go to a certain spot and then from there the mycelium that that is linked to everywhere under the soil is the thing that links all of nature it's such a beautiful program and it's eye-opening stuff actually it, uh, and so he was saying that it could even be that humans animals as we know it might have even be from mycelium because the mycelium will never die it'll always be there it'll, in darkness or that doesn't need sun it'll always just grow it's always there yeah don't even get us started on that whole story <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's super fascinating have you, have you heard terence mckenna's uh work like around yeah i mean that's it's it's also this once again the symbiosis of of human beings and nature was always there the, you know the we, we're feeling so distanced from it now. And uh, uh, I think uh, if we can try and remember in these times that we can, we have this role to play uh, as a team, you know, that, that that's really the cool thing. And, and the mycelium is exactly that. It's this connectedness of everything. Yeah. We're all together. It's, it, it, it connects everything and everyone together. And I think that's just so cool to, to picture. Mm. And, and there's so much wisdom in these things that we have no, no freaking idea about, you know, and, we just like to think we're really smart. We, we just don't even understand a tree, for example, or the root system communicating with mycelial networks, which travel thousands of kilometers, you know, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so don't you, don't you find, find Terence McKenna when he speaks, like, firstly, like you've now realized I'm Afrikaans and sometimes hmm. the words in English don't even come to me, but don't you find that that man's knowledge of, the English language is just so sexy uh, that when he starts talking and so most of the time I've got to look up some of the words, but man, I love watching his little YouTube uh, videos. Oh and my God. You can spend hours on down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> just listening, just listening to his voice, you know, besides the content. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I love it that you said that, but because you know, this is so true and this is kind of what probably a lot of Oaks think, you know, like, about many things you know we 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 sort of think things like like you said oh he has a, a sexy voice and um but you wouldn't maybe dare say it like in public so I'm, I'm just glad that you said that because so many of us are thinking things like that and we don't say it yeah. you know we, we're too scared of being vulnerable and i think that's such an important part of you know being a human these days is is showing that yeah. kind of vulnerability and talking about these things that maybe they're more feminine or whatever, but that's flipping cool. That is important. That's mm. what we are. Well, listen, if you, if you want to, if you allow me to talk a little bit about vulnerability, because there's a, there's a big lesson that I've learned about vulnerability a few years ago where, and, and I won't go into the detail of the, of the actual event, but I, I, I went through quite a bit of a tough time a few years ago, uh, being under a lot of financial pressure, being under pressure because I've had a few divorces, um, I had a lot of doubts in my mind about relationships, financial, my, my, me as a businessman and all those kind of things. And it kind of pushed me into a, a point where I literally had a nervous breakdown. That's a very long story. But out of that, having hit that rock bottom and coming out of it, um, the other end, I realized that, listen, if, if that happened to me if, because of such small actual problems there must be other people also struggling with anxiety depression all those kind of things and i thought i am going to start talking about it at uh, businesses and schools etc and with without me knowing that actual by actually doing it by being vulnerable i would actually feel so much better on the other side and so the big lesson I've learned is that vulnerability 
give you a few things. Vulnerability makes you feel good about sharing and being vulnerable. But more importantly, if you're really vulnerable with someone else, as humans, we all, we pick up things quickly. We quickly pick up if someone is full of shit or if he's open or, or closed or not. And being vulnerable, let other people immediately, most of them, also become a little bit more vulnerable, a little bit more open. And that's what you want with people. You really want to have a relationship. You want to explore. You want to talk. You'd, it's, uh, there's nothing worse than being with someone and both are closed and there's no real connection and there's no information sharing. So vulnerability is a, is, has been a big lesson for me because also, I mean, I mean, I've been a rugby player, fairly successful, fairly famous at one stage. And, and so you kind of think you, you kind of a little bit bigger than you are and, you know, you, you don't talk to people about the real stuff. And no, man, that taught me such a great lesson of just be vulnerable at, at the right time be open and people will change towards you as well. Yeah. I mean, but I think we, 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 we speak about this a lot. And I think that the, the big lesson about vulnerability is when you are vulnerable, it gives others permission to do the same, yes. right? Because all of a sudden it's like flipping AJ flip. He, what he's, he suffered from anxiety and he was depressed. Fuck me as well. You know, like, okay, so I can actually talk about this. Like, that's yeah. what it does. You know, like if it's, it's this weird thing, like if someone else has been down, it's actually, okay, now I can also talk about me. I've also been down as well, you know? So, yeah. but I mean, thanks for mentioning that because like, you know, we definitely want to actually talk about that. And I think, you know, um, so many Oaks, especially uh, struggle mentally and um, you know, but our egos kind of get in the way and we have this like flipping tough, outer shell that we that we don't want to kind of expose our inner feelings and i think it's more important for for all of us guys especially to talk about our issues because many of us mm -hmm. are like i think in the uk for example uh, the, the most amount of suicides are coming from guys that are suffering with uh, you know um mental kind of issues and and that's super sad you know because this is something we can actually recover from and just talk about by, by just talking about you know what i mean um no, big time. So, so i just read a thing about uh, the the uk um a study that's been done last year 2019 in 2019 74 percent of people in the uk uh, at some time in that year got to a stage where they thought in their, their thinking was i'm i'm so under pressure i'm so stressed right now that I, I I don't know where to go. Um, there's no there's no end to this. So that's a big number. That's a massive number. So if there's a room of people, seven of the ten people there has had a bit of a thing or will have a thing, or if you're in a room of ten people, at least someone there, or at least everyone knows someone that's had a tough time. But like you say, it is a tough thing to talk about because we're all brave. We're all uh parat and uh, it's 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 there's a there's almost like a bit of a stigma you you know if you you, you don't want to look like a loser you don't want to look like someone that don't know what's going on you want to be in control of your life you want to come across that you are in control of your life so it's a hard thing to talk about and i and i say this because it was hard for me it was really yeah. hard for me to talk about in the beginning but um and I, and I don't know if this is in in everywhere but i think men are worse in that in that case i think women are for them it's easier to talk to chat to their friends they are more open to to talk about these problems men are hard because they've got to look like they, they've got to look like they're in control they, they can't look like they're not in control because then they're, they're not the man in the in the house or in the relationship so often i think guys will will just keep that in keep it in keep it close and that thing will just fester and fester and grow until things happen like with me where you just get a nervous breakdown and some people never come back from that. Hmm. Thanks for sharing that AJ. I think, you know, honest to God, just literally hearing someone else say that can be a massive like relief for other people, you know, just going, wow, like this big rugby player, you know, like hard as they come can have a moment like that, you know, and that's, that's super powerful. And I think I went to a talk recently and I, they spoke about mental health in terms of, almost like having a cold, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can 
we've all had a cold, right? We've, we get the sniffles. What do you do? You, you go and take some, some vitamins, you get some rest, you drink lots of hot tea, you know, these kinds of things. And you go back, you know, get back to normal and hundred percent fine. And we, we tend to think of mental health, not, not illness, you know, mental health in a very different way, but you can have a bad patch. You're just not feeling yourself, you know, and, and what would you, what would you do then? You, you tend to people, one tends to just grip, go and sort of go hide yourself away. Whereas if it was a cold, you would do something about it, you know, and, and we should do the same with the mental, like speak to someone, you know, go and get more rest or do make sure you have rituals of self care and you will then get over that little hump again, generally speaking, and it will go on and we should start seeing it in that sort of way. And for me, that was quite sort of clarifying in, in terms of how to see these kinds of things. And it's just, it's just, in, just like your normal health. We have a health baseline. There's going to be times where your health baseline is a little bit down and you're physically not feeling great. And then you're feeling on top of the world, loads of energy. We've all woken up feeling like amazing like that. Our mental health is exactly the same. Why is it separate? You know, we always talk about yeah. mind body connection. And so, yes, th there's an example of how the one could be linked to the other, you know? Yeah, that is a, such a beautiful way of explaining it. Thank you. Um, nice. that's, 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 cool. that's nice and clear. Also, so f when people hear mental health, that word is like a word, oh, mental health is crazy, he's mad. So where does, where does these things come from? It, it, could, it could be as small as, uh, someone is in abusive relationship. Okay, so that doesn't mean the woman is crazy. She is in abusive relationship, and she can't get out of it. And that thing becomes the stress point in our mind. So, same with guys. Guys might be in a relationship where abusive in other ways, cheating, whatever. And that thing drives him absolutely crazy. It's not like you, it's not that you are crazy, but your mm. circumstances around you is pushing you to a, to a, to a situation. Finances. Finances is mm. something that pushes a lot of people to the edge. Health. Someone has, uh, you know, has got cancer and, and, or, or whatever illness. And so these are the things. And, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm not a, of course, not, I'm not a doctor. Or, um, but of course, there are people that have got actual problems. Sure, there are. But I think the bigger part of of people out there have got the stress of just being human. You are human. You've got stress, relationships, health, all those things. And those things kind of might lead your mind down the wrong road and put you into a difficult space. If I could just share a quick anecdote, it's interesting now that I'm thinking about it. Like when I moved to the Netherlands uh, and then I lived, now I live in Australia, I, for the first time when I lived there, I heard people talk about, having a burnout, right? And mental health came on the radar. When I lived in South Africa, I'd never heard that term in my life before. And at first I, I used to think, wow, people are soft here. You know, like in South Africa, we don't, no one has burnout. You just flip and go, you just work and you don't stop. And that's changed a lot for me now because I think it comes back to those constraints we put on ourselves. The identity, the story we told ourselves in South Africa is that the man doesn't have that. So uh, you know, you don't allow yourself to have these. It wasn't that no one had those things. People burnt out and got tired and stressed and depressed, just like anywhere else. It's just that we didn't have a culture of being able to talk about it. So this yeah. is why these, these, this is the start of this to, you know, people like yeah. yourself are creating that change. Yeah, no, you are hundred percent right. hundred percent right. Yeah. It's so sad that we, that we just feel like we have to represent a certain story you know and it's yeah yeah it's so yeah. sad actually interesting i i can't agree with you more so to, just bringing it back to something a bit more positive here aj look we we couldn't move on without asking you a, bit, a little bit more about like just the absolute presence you must feel or what does it feel like just to walk out into this incredibly packed stadium for the first time or you know that that mm. even for, especially for like the box you know what i mean like what, what does that feel like when you go out into this big stadium? Yes, I, and I always get this question. So, uh, I think I think the the the, the lead up to games is almost um, m that's what I feel always more the the, the media, the training, um, uh, 
captain's run, all those things before. Even like driving to the game and when you see um, the fans and when you see people next to the road, that always was a beautiful thing uh, for me. You, you know, everyone has got their flags. They know the bus is coming. Um, that, that's, that's awesome. For me, I've always somehow switched off when, when we got onto the field. Um, obviously, with the, when you play just Super Rugby or Curry Cup in, in South Africa, you know, there's, not, there's no anthem before. So when you run, when you leave the change room, for me, it's just been switched on. I know there's people, but I, I really don't see further than those four lines. It's me and those oaks there, because if I don't uh, sharpen up now, they're going to murder me. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but when, it, when you play for the box, I, I will never forget the first test. Um, when you sing the anthem, that's another emotion. That's another mm -hmm. emotion because you stand, you're facing the crowd, you can see the emotion on the people. And then the, this is something that you've trained for for your whole life. I mean, you, you play rugby from high school up, up onwards because you want to get that Springbok jersey. You want to mm -hmm. play in front of all those people. So that for me was, uh, uh, was interesting because it kind of threw me off my game. But even then, I was a little bit older. I was supposed to be a little bit more experienced. But you, it's very hard to kind of get ready for that kind of emotion. And, but it was a beautiful thing. I have to say that's nice and for me it was always so beautiful singing our anthem but also being able to stand next to the Scottish anthem or the Irish anthem mm -hmm. or God Save Our Queen or, or the New Zealand anthem um, and, and in particular um, people always ask me what about the haka? I mean isn't it scary to watch the haka? So <clears throat> when you play at this level, um, things like the Haka don't scare you. All those guys that play at international level, when they face the Haka, it's not scary for the other team. It's a beautiful thing. It's a respect thing. Um, yeah. it, it is probably one of the most recognized things in the world. Everyone, everyone knows the Haka. And to be able to have that opportunity to stand in front of those guys. Obviously, the All Blacks right now, for the last how many years, have been the best team in the world, apart from now, of course, we are the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, what a privilege to, to have been able to, to do that, man. It's, um, you know, even now talking about it, I just, I reminisce and, 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 I, and, I, and I've got fucking good feelings about it. Mm. Wow. Do, do you miss anything about those days at all? No, I don't. No, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to say that I don't. Um, it's not something that I look back and I want back. Uh, I, and, 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 I, and I think it's mainly because when I, when I retired, I kind of made that decision in my mind. Okay, that is a part of my life. It was a big part of my life. It's, it'll always be there. But there's a second part of my life now. I'm four, uh, 35 years old. <clears throat> it's great. I'm not the rugby player anymore. However, if you can help me in the future through my business, great. But I park that thing now. And it's been beautiful and I'm grateful, but I'm going to let that rest for now. And I need to build this new life and, and, and open, like I explained before, open new things, new beliefs, new angles, the new things you look at life. And so I'm very content with, with packing that away. Yeah, for sure, but 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 okay. So so that's a great segue, actually. Look, and, and I don't want to um, disregard at all. Like you know, your, your you, you had you had an amazing like rugby career, and and we could honestly spend probably flipping six, seven, eight hours talking about your rugby. But um, we will we will talk about that more, I guess, in the intro, if you don't mind. Like um, because I think there's there's some other really important stuff here um for for our listeners to kind of uh, latch on to if if you don't mind so absolutely um you 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 have an identity like we've spoken about in this podcast right you 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 you're a rugby player you played at the highest level um people adore you and but then you retire right and and now you you almost have to reinvent yourself like that is not an easy transition by any stretch of the imagination, is it? So, I mean, no. can you just talk us through that sort of, uh, what, what is it like for you from a, 
mental, financial, emotional perspective, please. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. So yes, it definitely isn't a difficult, I mean, an easy uh, transition and, and not only rugby, but any sport. And so, and, 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 pardon me. And even, I would even go as far as to say that there are, that there are sports that are much, much harder to, to come out of retirement than ours because um, we're, not, we're not NFL players or soccer players. We don't get paid that money, but South African rugby players at a certain level, you get paid a fairly good amount of money. So if you invest right, if you've got the right people around you while you're still playing, you could possibly form a little nice nest egg. Um, but there are other sports in South Africa in particular that people are professional, but they don't get paid that money. So it's also, I mean, I'm not talking for them. I'm just assuming this, but I mm. think I'm not far off. So which, that is making it really hard for them as well, you know, a harder. But for, for me, for example, I, I retired when I was 25 years old. Now, bearing in mind that I studied a little bit before school, um, then halfway through it stopped, started playing professional rugby. Throughout my career, I did many courses. I tried to upskill myself through many different things. But that still doesn't teach you anything about business. It doesn't, there's nothing that teach you about anything like doing it, right? So now I'm 35 years old and I retired and I retire. And, 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 and again, I'm from that era where I've worked first half of my career and then the second half became professional. Um, and the last few years of my life, I started working in my off days for another company to learn. Now, players don't do that. Players literally start, if you're lucky, at 19 or 20 or 21 and they became professional sportsmen and they retire when they're 30 or 32, 34, 35. There's no business in there. I know they're trying a few <laughs> things, but there's no business in there. You know, you know, there's nothing that can train you more for your business than doing the business. So now I'm 35 years old, I retire and my peers, guys that have been, that are my age, have been to, went to school with me, they've got 15 years uh, head start on me. So they either uh, work themselves up in a, a business and they are settled in a managerial position, or maybe they're not, but most of them are. Or you've got a guy that started his own business and he either lost money or he's made uh, like a, like a good, built a good business. And so I'm stepping off at 35, no knowledge of business, I'm stepping in where whether they stepped in when they were 20 because I don't have a family business to fall back on to. So I've got to go out and start in the bottom. Okay. I understand that I've got some privileges being a professional sportsman because you can get uh, in contact with certain people. It, it is easier. I understand that. But it's, it is still very challenging. Sorry, could you hear that? It's a thing that came through. I don't know how to switch off. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's still very challenging to manage this process and manage it well um i mean a friend of mine always said to me uh it'll take you four or five years after retirement before you can start settling into your business or whatever and and he's been he's been almost he's been almost spot on it takes a few years to come out of sport find that thing because a lot of people don't even know what they want to find something is that the thing that you like it might not be the thing that you like at the first going you can change you're going to another work so that is a very interesting time for many, many, many players. It's not a difficult thing. And we, you know, see, people have said to me, why don't you start something to help players? If someone came to me when I was 28 years old and I was earning a good batch of money, having a nice house, beautiful girlfriend, I'm not sure whether I would have listened to someone to say to me, hey, don't do it like that. You need to do it this way. I think there need to be a platform in place to assist players coming out of retirement that two, three years after when they now understand the importance and now they open to learn and open to take advice. Only then do I think um, something like that could, could, could help players. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very, very brittle area for players. Yeah. yeah. It's it, it's it's interesting, but that you that you say that like they almost you almost need the, a transitionary period after you uh, finish before your almost transitionary period begins in a way. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, and and um, we had a, a good friend of ours, a guy called Sean Roberts, on the podcast like ages ago, and he actually used to play Premier League football. He was a keeper, and um, you know he he really struggled as well with this kind of like 
new identity and and like what does he actually do like he doesn't have any skills he's just flipping played soccer and now yeah. now what you know now you're kind of like out in the lurch and you're left in the open and you've just got to kind of reinvent yourself it's uh, a yeah. it, 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 it's a really daunting situation you know even though you are this like person who's you know who you would think it wouldn't be that difficult but it is because at the end of the day you are just a human aren't you yeah no 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 it's very very hard and and Man, I, I wish all those guys that are still coming after me, I'm so grateful that my time is over. I, my, my transition <laughs> is over. And, and I wish that the other guys will do the best and do the right thing, you know? So how did you start to go on that pathway of, as you mentioned, knowing what you wanted to do? Do we know what we want to do ever? Do we, I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I am, I'm the... Uh, I, I think I'm the ultimate, un, no, ultimate is not the right word. I, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to run my own business. That, that, that's my drive. Right now, I'm working for a company called iTech. Uh, great company to work for. Amazing company. Uh, it's almost, I'm, I'm almost running my own little business within the business. So, um, again, just, just learning from them again, Whatever I knew before, uh, what, 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 what I thought was what I want to do and what I knew has changed now again. So I, I'm not sure whether we always, I don't know, maybe you guys, if you do know, if you do know what it is that thing, uh, I'd like to hear. But I think we always grow, all, we grow all the time. Every thing we learn more, we become a new person. And that also comes back to business and comes back to like your question. I think we always grow and we always, that goalpost always moves. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so then the question maybe should be, how do you go about growing? Hmm. Oh, well, so, so, so what, okay. So, so maybe we, maybe you can just like, you know, t tell us your experience of it because um, I think it is a really important question and what you actually said I agree with it wholeheartedly, but I actually don't think a lot of people uh, maybe do that. That n not everyone is always growing, you know. Mm. Um, like you said in the in the start, like you know, you if you're looking for a course, uh, you flip and start noticing courses. So if you if you think you're growing, everyone else is growing. But I don't think that is the case. Actually, I think maybe a lot of people are stuck and they don't know how to. So what? So like Craig said, you know what? What do you need to do? But to don't, but what don't, was your experience? Yeah. So, so don't you think that, again, this is my perspective, and I might change it again, but don't you think that one really changes when you are a, a little bit out of your comfort? When, 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 when life throws you curveballs, right now, right now, we are all out of our comfort. This is the time now when we start doing business different. We start doing Zoom uh, meetings uh, people are teaching their kids at school and so all just by this natural thing happen we 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 changing we growing we learning new new things and again bring it back to my 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 uh, point in, right in the beginning it's very hard to change just by yourself some people do that naturally you want to learn more you just want to learn you just want to become a better person but a lot of people i think need a little bit of push either from someone else or from nature or from the, your, your situation around you. For me, I find, I find I've got my best growth when I am challenged, when, when, when things are not that easy, um, whether it's relationships, whether it's work, whether it's finances. Uh, when, when everything is going well, AJ tends to just settle a little bit and take a breather. So, my, my growth almost slows down just a little bit. So I, in my life, I almost want to be challenged all the time. I want to be challenged physically, in my mind, spiritually, all those things, because that brings the best out of me. I hope that answers the question. Not quite, because I, I still feel like, I, yes, it does. But so then the question still remains of like, how, how are you challenging us? Like, it, what sort of things do you put in your life to, to make sure that you feeling similar is it a is it a friendship group is it a um is there some other ritual is there pushing your own boundaries what, what are the things that you kind of that we can mm. all maybe glean from you to like 
find these new challenges that we can test our armor and and make us think obviously now we have a global one but like what 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 do you do in your normal day-to-day mm. life that makes you do you just try new things or, or what is your sort of go-to okay, so 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 i think i understand your question now so there's a, there's a few things that, and again i'll go, go back to the tough time that i had and what what keeps me from not going back to to that difficult time what what keeps my mind uh, fresh a few things i do one uh the most important i've i've had to change i've had to really slim down my circle of friends i had to i had to let some people around me go that was friends of me for many many years because they weren't they weren't feeding the the right animal with an age they weren't they were negative people many many different things so i had to really change my circle of friends and i have to say right now I've got a bunch of guys around me between five or 10 that these guys are all in the same mind frame that I am, that I want to be guys that are positive, that sees in a situation like this, we, yes, we realize that it's a tough time. We know what it is, but what can we get out of it? How can we build sports? I've got a real, real good circle of friends around me. The second thing for me that became really important was I, through this thing that happened to me, I learned to meditate. And it was a hard thing in the beginning for me. It was very tough for me. Because if you don't know how to do it, you don't know how to do it. And and I managed to uh, get this one app called um, Inside Timer. And through doing one or two courses on this thing, I started understanding, okay, this is what meditation is doing. Um, This is how how it can help me. Now, for me, I, I try to do many different meditations, but currently, well, not as I say for the last two years, actually, I really focus on gratitude um, meditation. And the reason for that is often I live in an estate, a beautiful estate. I'm very lucky, but I'm in an apartment. So there are many, 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 many bigger houses, more successful people around me driving bigger cars. And by seeing that all the time, naturally as a person, you start going, oof, you know, oof, I want that, I want that. And every time, that, every day, every second, every third day, when I sit down for my 20 minutes of gratitude meditation and I sit still and I go, okay, I've actually woken up this morning and I took a breath. That means I'm alive. Okay. I've got clothes. I've got water. I've got an apartment. And as you start thinking and in your mind, focusing on, that, on those things, the car, Every time I come out of my meditation, I realize, okay, that's good. You're good. And then it keeps me, that keeps me grounded. It keeps me stable. So that's, those are just two of the things that, that I right now, and again, one of the things I've stopped watching TV, I've, um, um, DST, I've, I've closed my DSTV, which is our uh, pay channel here, because it's got all the news, news channels. I choose my time to watch news in the mornings. I'll take my phone and I'll scroll quickly. For five minutes okay let me just quickly look into those things i'm not going to get caught up by all the peripheral jargon that just sells new stuff so i've kind of realized that i've, I've got to control the data that comes into my mind Massive, we're the only people yeah. that can control um i mean i can open to everything but then i'm gonna what do you believe in like we said before so so i've changed that and and then lastly social media um i at the time also realized that i cannot let this device with all the social media platforms in the back bombard all this data that i can't control and slowly but surely over two years i've got my two or three platforms that i use um, i always say to people social media is not a bad thing it's going to be here for it's, it's here forever it's not, you're not going to change it what is bad is some of the people that we follow and some of the pages that we follow, people that are not building us into the right way, people that are negative, um, pages that that are negative. And so over a few years, I kind of, I call it rinsing my social media. I literally rinsed all the negative stuff out and I filled it up with positive stuff, um, ridiculously human uh, on my uh, Instagram, uh, Tony Robbins. So we can choose, we can choose the data that we allow in here that either benefit us or not. Oh, that, yeah, 
hundred percent. And you know what? One thing that stands out for me, like, which, um, which I think is super important about you and everything that you're saying is that you're also, you're lang curious, right? You know, you've talked about all these different shows that you watch on Netflix and, and do you know this oak and this oak and, and that's important. Hey, like, I think, mm. you know, the more curious you become about certain things, the better, because then the more you're actually learning about stuff rather than being stuck with these kind of blinkers on, um, you begin to find out what are, what is actually important in the world and, and like mm -hmm. what you like and your perspective starts shifting and these sort of things. And I think, you know, that, that helps with the growth as well is having that curious mindset. Um, and, and one thing, uh, which you, which you touched on, which I think is, is really, really interesting. Um, First of all, social media, like you said, it can be awesome, uh, definitely, um, and we, we need to filter it in the right way. Um, and, and the negative side is that we always comparing ourselves to other people. We're comparing our our insides to their outsides. You know what I mean? Like, um, and and that is that is that is a difficult. And, and, and oh, that's a nice that. that that's a nice. I'll I'll remember that. That's nice. I like that. I like yeah. that. I, I can't take that. We actually stole that from one of our previous guests and I was like, that I'm definitely using some time. <laughs> yeah, so I so like thank that. you, Shelly Paxton for that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, what I was going to say, what was I going to say? Um, oh yes. I know what I was going to say. Um, you, you mentioned you, you looked at guys and you're like, Oh, he's, he's got a bigger car and uh, you know, a bigger house, whatever. Right. Um, I guess in some way we, we, we do compare ourselves to other people, but, but, and you, you mentioned, oh, he's more successful because he has a better car. What does successful actually mean to you now though? Mm. And, and, and yes, and that's exactly when you said that now, my inside to the outside, it just clarified in my mind again. So we never, we never know. The, 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 the guy with a big house or the guy with a beautiful wife or the, wife with a beautiful man or whatever we never know actually what's on the insides mm. it looks fantastic from the outside but how do you know so that's uh, the first thing what is success for me man success for me it's a few things you've got me off guard but i would start by saying i i you've mentioned being open for for for, for learning and, and learning a few things for me use that time to learn as much as I can because I've I've basically learned more about life in the last I'd say seven years than I've learned in the first 35 so for me I've realized that there's still so much in life there's still so much for all of us to learn and things and and also things that we knew 20 years ago or 10 years ago that we thought was the ultimate about whatever business, you know, the cosmos, it, it's changed. There, there's so there's so much new information coming out. But for me, the biggest thing is I need to just learn as much as I can. The more you know, the more open you are. That for me really is success. The more the more you know, the better you'll be in in, in business. The better you'll be as a human, as a friend. It's about it's about opening yourself, learning more things and opening, and again, cultures, opening to other cultures, understanding other people. That is the success for me. At one stage, it used to be, what, what car do I drive? How big is my salary at rugby? Um, how many games do I play? That's, that's, that, for me, re honestly, it's not important. Those are, it's great. Have a goal. Have goals. Let's have goals. But it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't make us there's much more than, like you say, driving the best car, um, having the biggest house. That's great. Have those goals. But there's more to that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You know, it made me think of something that I'm just grateful for now that, that's successful that I just thought of right now. I was just hearing having a conversation, hey, how, how a good yes. conversation with good people. That's like, I feel very successful, like in, in a personal way, like, it's just such a wonderful thing, part of personal growth, to be able to sit here and and do this right now. Like that, that's that's a form of success that is so sort of it's it's intangible in some weird way. But um, and it's hard to then show that to anyone else. You know, that's that's the thing. But 
you know, to me right now, that that's a very much a very a big success. And I think that's like you said, you have to figure out, you have to actually take the time to figure out what success means to you, you know? Mm. And then once you've kind of one, one has defined that, that's, then it's a goal that you can sort of achieve more easy, definitely easier. And once we live in this outside portraying this, this thing to the world, um, man, that must, that just gets so tiring eventually. And I think, uh, yeah, it's just not a, not healthy at all. Eh? Yeah. So, I mean, like you guys, you've got this amazing podcast and, and you guys are reaching so many people. And for me as well, so, so I, my podcast, I don't even know how to make money out of it. So I've never even thought about how to make money out of it. It's not about that for me. That is another part of that, that for me is success. If I can have a podcast with a great following and I can have an amazing people on my podcast and share stories and change people's lives by people's stories on my podcast. That's another thing that'll make me feel so happy to, to have that platform, to have guys on my podcast that no other people would find difficult to have on. That's, that's a form of success for me again. It's, it's not a monetary one. It's a feel success. Yeah. yeah, but for sure, man. And and like, yes, I, I dig your podcast, but I, I love the Oaks you've had on. You're having mm. really important conversations, seriously. So so thanks for, you know, opening up that platform. And I guess maybe, how, how can you, can you tell us like, what do you dig about podcasting? And, and how, maybe more importantly, like, uh, how has it actually changed you? Mm. So, so when I, I, I did a bit of commentary uh, here in South Africa for rugby. And I found that it was amazing. It was great. And it's a, it's a great platform. Uh, it's an amazing platform for, to your brand, to grow your brand. But I've always just found it so frustrating that you literally have got a script. Like even, even in commentating, there's a script. You cannot be truthful. You cannot be the true AJ. I cannot say what I want. Because I know that I get fired if I say certain things. Uh, we, we, and that's, I mean, we live in a country that's interesting and that's got many different angles and, and, and difficulties. So you've got to be so careful to say what you want because you might offend the bigger viewer group. Okay, but that's not my, that's not my, uh, 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 that's not me. Well, make a plan. So I really didn't like that. And for me, even if I've got a hundred people watching my podcast, but I can be me, I can, I can say fuck <laughs> <laughs> if I want. And I can talk about religion and my religious beliefs um, or mycelium and mushrooms. I want to do that. And this is the beauty about podcasting for me. It's such a beautiful platform and people should do it. People should start their own podcast. It costs nothing. You can have a microphone and a few things and off you go and a, and, and a computer. We've, we've, we've all got a computer. It's a great, great platform. I love it. Mm. And a cool thing about it too, isn't it? Haven't you found is that it, it helps you find your own voice a little bit like on, on how to sort of articulate what's in your mind because we all have thoughts in our mind and, and it's quite hard sometimes to kind of get what's in your head into words and, and then get the question across or whatever it is. So it's just a great tool for people to, to sort of practice certain skills that are important in life around communication anyway. Absolutely. You're hundred yeah. percent right. Uh, it, I, I found that when I, once I, as I started doing the podcasting and talking about my stuff, it cleared my mind as you talk, like even today, a few times, Penny dropped in a few things and I said, oh, okay, I must remember that. Yeah, when you <laughs> verbalize things and this uh, platform gives the opportunity to do that as well. Yeah, totally sure, yeah. bud. Cool, my man. Um, look, bud, uh, we've spoken about such, such amazing stuff and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on here. So I guess, I mean, be, before we actually, uh, Craig, ask you the last question, um, maybe you just want to kind of, I know you've already touched on it, but maybe you just want to tell uh, people uh, what you're currently doing now, um, where they can get hold of you, and then also like, what are you actually most excited about uh, for the future as well? Mm, thank you. So, yeah, and you know what? Also, like everyone, everyone is uh, the company that I work for is, is called iTech, and we're in the uh, technology space. And one of our products is um, CCTV cameras, and one of the products is these um, thermal detection. Uh, ca uh, camera. So basically, it's 20 people walking in front of you. It picks, and you've set the limit at 37 degrees. If it's 38, it picks it up out of a crowd of 20. Mm. And 
so so we've been really busy i've been doing quoting every day in my house so although we have been in my house i've been so busy with work because everyone wants these cameras now for their factories and the mines etc etc so that's i tech we um uh, I'm based in Durban, but I work all over. And obviously, I've got the podcast um, called Life with AJ Fenter. They can get it on any uh, YouTube, Facebook, uh, also uh, um, Apple Podcast and Google Podcast, all the platforms. And then I do talks at schools and businesses about, you know, what happened to me and, and how I got through it. So basically, those are the three things that I'm I'm busy with with uh, in Workwise, which I'm so grateful for to be busy and 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 on the go and what i'm excited for guys i'm excited to be alive i honestly again i'm so i'm looking back at this thing that happened to me and i never want it over but i'm looking back in with gratitude because that thing that happened to me placed put me into another direction and a trajectory of realizing that we are lucky to be alive if you earn a salary, you're lucky. You you you're part of a uh, you know a, a small group of people in this world. It's a beautiful place. We're gonna be here, like we said, for a few seconds in the if you take time and space of the world. Let's not take ourselves too seriously. And I always end my talk with the following. I always say, we often hold on to things we've done and things we've said and that holds us back the past we always worried about the past what have i done what have i what did i do we often also worry about the future the unknown we stressed so the past and the future gives us stress can we change the past we cannot change the past anything that happened yesterday or two minutes ago i can't change it's done it's history it's finished i cannot change it can i predict the future no i can't predict i can I can plan for tomorrow, but I might die tonight. So I can't predict the future. So the only thing we can do is live this moment, this every second as it takes. It's a moment, a moment. We can <clears throat> only control this moment right now. That's the only thing we can do. And we can control it by having positive thoughts, by saying the right stuff now to someone else, and being a good person. That's all we can do. This moment right now is the only control we've got over. Mm -hmm. well it, super well said <laughs> drop that road mic right now <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks uh, thanks for that and uh we're just so grateful as well to be honest just just to have have you grace us with your your presence and your kind words uh, today so but when, sort of last question here we always ask our guests and uh, uh the, the the golden question is what does being ridiculously human mean to you aj for me, it's just being being a nice guy to the people around you, being open to learn. Basically, those two things. I thought about this question because I know you ask it. And for me, it's basically that you, you, being a good person, being a nice person, and being able to learn, basically respecting other people around you. For me, that is the most important thing. That is being a ridiculously human. Mm -hmm. that's, love it, love it. Uh, that's awesome, bud. And that's, and that's it, man. Like it doesn't have to be something flippant complicated you know what i mean like we mm. we're complicated enough so let's try and be like a little bit more simple and and that is beautiful but because you know it's not always that easy to be nice to people so i flip and i flip and love that man so thank you so much and i just wanted to wow but like i'm still flipping starstruck i can't lie like i mean you know here we, we, we're speaking to aj Fenta and like you know it's like yes this is this really happening so um thank you so much and 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 I think this is actually like such an important conversation, but look, we, we could have spoken about, you know, like rugby and, and the great life and a lot of Oaks are probably going to be upset with me that we didn't right? but mm -hmm. I think we touched on stuff that was really, really important, you know, and, um, you know, talking about vulnerability, mental health, um, you know, things that we're struggling with, things that are important in life. And these are the conversations that I think need to happen more and more and more. And because an oak like you has opened up to us and said these things, that is power, right? And that is powerful for other guys, you know, for youngsters that are growing up, for older oaks as well, you know what I mean? For them to realize, okay, yes, yeah, see if AJ can talk about these things and he's curious about this stuff and, and whatnot, 
then it's okay for me to do that too, you know, for me to go mm. down those paths and to think those things. So such a powerful chat, but and such an important one. So, so thank you for being so honest and just like opening up to us, you know, that, that, that is really, really important, really, really special. And, you know, you're, you're flipping such a good Oak as well, but, and it's, it's nice to, it's just so nice to see this other side to a, like a famous person, you know what I mean? Like, um, and that you are so kind and smiley and friendly. So, Love the chat, but I really, really appreciate it. And, and we literally can't wait to, you know, have more of these in the future. You know, hopefully this is the first of, of many. So I so really appreciate it, bud. No, guys, thank you, Gareth. Thank you, Greg. I love that. I've been wanting to be on your podcast for a long time. So, yeah, thank you. Great opportunity. Thank you. Pleasure, thank man. you. And just real briefly from my side, AJ, listen, it's, it's been a massive lesson in not judging a book by a cover. Once again, you know, like. You thought I was a doer. <laughs> yeah, this is not quite what I'm saying, but you know, we, podcasts are about reading between the lines. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but uh, but seriously, like uh, like Gareth said, you know, just that's we love surprises, and you know, when and not just saying like right now, but I just think a lot of people might be surprised at at how deep you think about things, and and once again, like how how that's actually pretty damn cool to to spend time thinking and talking about these things. So thank you for that. And um, you do, you're certainly breaking a mold, you know, of yourself, of your own, of your own chains. Um, and then once again, like uh, just stereotypes, you know, and, and that, that they, those all are just constructs in our minds, you know, all these stereotypes that we all find ourselves in. So once again, it's a form of giving permission to others, you know, like the vulnerability piece. Um, it's almost like a breaking the mold piece. And, and that's also really awesome. And yeah. just the last thing, um, you know, we're talking about comparing, but you know, in this case, it's kind of cool to compare to you because you're like, you, you just, this kind of, like, I feel really empowered by your story. And, and I, and I want to compare myself to you because I feel that it's a, it's like this, um, I leaning, I'm leaning into this feeling of, uh, growth that you, that you're on and that we're all, like, we're all kind of equal in some way, even though you're this mm -hmm. famous rugby player, like I feel, and that's a great, trait that you portraying nowadays so thank you AJ. it was awesome man. <laughs> thanks guys thanks yeah. a lot man i really appreciate it cool man. waking at dawn packing the gear september tour and up in the air stop at the toll digging